Hello and welcome back. This is video number five. We're going to talk about how to automate the ring. Now that you understand how everything is interlinked, how everything is connected, and how you can kind of be creative and make your own ring. So after viewing the previous video, you can imagine how tedious and overwhelming it is to have to maintain the ring, much less get it set up yourself. But lucky for you, there is a way to automate it once you have set things up. It's getting things set up is the tedious process. Now, there's a software platform called IFTTT, and there's another one called Zapier.com that allows you to automate the process of moving content all around your social properties. So you could take a YouTube video and have it pushed to your WordPress site. And by pushed, I mean have it embedded on your WordPress site and then have it shared on your Facebook fan page, your Twitter page, your Instagram, and all of that. So you have essentially what we call triggers that whenever the trigger happens, then this something else happens. So what IFTTT stands for is if then this, that. So if this happens, then what kind of deal? Now, between the two, Zapier will cost you a lot of money after a while. A lot of times they'll give you some free triggers and zaps, which is what they call it. And beyond that, it will cost money. Whereas with IFTTT, it's just as good, but it's free. So let's hop on over and show you how IFTTT works. Okay, so if you head on over to IFTTT.com, that's IFTTT3Ts.com, you'll see this page. You can go ahead and create an account and you'll find a lot of really cool, interesting triggers is what we call it in IFTTT. So what a trigger is, is let's say you upload a YouTube video and then the system detects that the video has been uploaded. What do you want to happen after that happens? So if YouTube video has been uploaded, then post it to WordPress. Then after that, take the post on WordPress, maybe post it elsewhere or post the YouTube video to Twitter and so forth and so forth. So as you can imagine, this does get tedious, but if you map things out, if you know ahead of time what it's going to look like, then you can simply look at it and say, okay, I'm pointing YouTube to Twitter. So anytime video has been uploaded to YouTube, then it simply gets pushed or embedded into Twitter. So we need to make a IFTT trigger for that. So to do that, it's very easy. All you have to do is go to my applets up here and you can do a search for applets. Now services over here, I'm not going to click that, but this tab here allows you to essentially connect to all of the services that you're going to be using. So for example, as you can see here, I've got Tumblr to Weebly, RSS to Google Drive, a YouTube like to OneNote, YouTube like to Facebook page. And the reason why you might want to have YouTube likes is let's say for example that you already have maybe 50 videos on your YouTube channel, but you want to find a way to get those videos embedded. So what we figured out is that YouTube likes is the way to go. So obviously you can't re-upload a video that hasn't already been uploaded and is already getting thousands of views. The way you go about it is create a YouTube like trigger so that you can simply like it and then it gets posted to throughout your network. Now, as you can see here, you can easily get lost in the mix of everything. So that's why I said visually map everything out first. And then from that point, then you can simply go in and set things up. So like blogger to Weebly, YouTube to Facebook, YouTube to blogger, YouTube to Instapaper, YouTube to DIIGO, YouTube to Google Plus page via Buffer, and all that. 
and we got YouTube to Tumblr, YouTube to Twitter. So it can go on and on and on if you really want it to, or you can simply pick and choose what you want and what you don't want and go from there. Now, in order to turn them on, you can simply click here to turn them on. But for the sake of just showing you, this is what it looks like. So as you can see, the Tumblr to Weebly is activated. So when it is activated, it'll have the on button and the green light. Hello and welcome to video number six. And we're going to talk about account creation. Okay, so obviously in order to set up the IFTTT ring, you need to have accounts for all of your branded social properties. So in other words, you need to have the username and password for Facebook, for Twitter, for all the other social media properties. Now, obviously, if you already have some, then great. You don't have to create those. But for the ones that you do not have, you want to be able to create those. Now, while that does sound very simple, there's a few things that you really need to focus on. So to make sure that you're successfully able to do this without risking your accounts being closed, and that does happen, we're going to cover a few things that you must do with all of your accounts. In fact, some of our accounts have been banned or closed by mistake because it has to be done a certain way. So you need to make sure that you have everything correct. Now, first you need to have an email address, preferably a Gmail account or an email account that is reliable. And you need to have one email address for that. Typically you want to have something that is branded as well, because you never know with these social media platforms, if they're analyzing every step of the process. Now, most social media accounts we have found require you to have a unique telephone number. So you will need to use either yours or you'll need to get one. If you don't have one and you don't want to use your personal telephone, there are several places to get unique telephone numbers that can be used for both voice and SMS. And the reason why you want to have it for SMS as well is because some of these social media platforms will send you a text message. Now, one in particular that we use is called line2.com. That's line2.com. And of course, there are many out there, but this is just one that we have tested and it works really well. So a lot of times when you create a brand new social media property and account, you need to have a unique telephone number. Now, the reason for needing a unique telephone number is because most social media platforms, they really want to make sure that you are legitimate, especially nowadays. They have a lot of checks and balances and things that you need to get around to make sure that your account stays open. In fact, recently, Facebook has been on a major crackdown, especially with everything that's been going on in the news. They want to make sure that you are legit and that you are not fake. Another thing is you'll also need to have a short bio, a description about your business, your website URL, a picture that is yours and a professional, or if you don't have your picture, you can use a professionally royalty free stock photo. Now, why do you need all this information? Well, the reason why you need all this information is because when it comes to account creation, you are going to need to have every piece of these items in hand to copy and paste over. Obviously, if you outsource this process, it's going to be a lot easier. And with that case, you're definitely going to need these items. And it's just going to make your life a lot easier when you're able to copy and paste and all of that. Your picture is actually very important because even Facebook will review photos on all accounts to make sure that fake accounts are not created. In fact, we created an account one time and it was using kind of a fake image. And even though it was royalty free and all of that, Facebook declined it and in fact uh, did not approve the account. So they really want to make sure that your account is legitimate. Now it's best if you take all this information and you write it out in an Excel spreadsheet so that you have it in hand, 
you have the username and passwords of all the social media properties and you can simply log in and begin to create the accounts. So those are the kind of the best practices that we have found over the years in terms of creating accounts. And while some of those seem very basic, the one that really stood out that was really important was making sure that you had that unique telephone number.